Today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of the Enphase Enlighten mobile app. With every Enphase system, you get lifetime monitoring from Enphase through their Enlighten web portal. They have a fantastic app, it's very consumer friendly, and we think you're going to love it. I'm Jason with Florida Solar Design Group. We may have had this discussion already, and this is going to be a detailed review of the Enphase Enlighten app so that you can get the most out of your monitoring system. If you're our client, I may have had this discussion with you already. If you're a prospective client, this is what you can expect from the web app. And if you have a system installed by another contractor, this will show you how to use your app because they probably didn't tell you how to do it. This video assumes that you've already been granted access to the app and you've downloaded it onto your device and logged in. Feel free to follow along with your app. I'm gonna show you another client site so that we have some real data to work with. The status page provides you with an overview of what's happened today since midnight. This client site has consumed 27.4 kilowatt hours today since midnight, and since the sun came up, it has produced 22.5 kilowatt hours. Don't worry too much about the import and export numbers here. The values aren't really that important for net metering customers. Also disregard the grid dependence figure. This also isn't important for net metering customers. It simply tells you you are dependent on the grid for the nighttime hours. With net metering, it doesn't matter when you produce and consume energy. The net amount is all that matters. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see some environmental impact data. All of the app navigation is at the bottom. You have the status page, energy tab, array tab, and menu. Before we leave the status page, there's a couple important things to see here. First, you want to make sure that your system is normal. You'll have a green check mark and a normal indicator. If it says anything else like warning, microinverters not producing, production issue, or any other error, you can tap on the error for more information. But most importantly, get in touch with us to find out what's going on. The weather information comes from the National Weather Service. If you don't have a live status button on your app, it's probably because you're on an older software version and we can help you get that set up. Go ahead and tap on the live status button. The live status is the only place in the app where you can see what's happening with your system right now. Please keep that in mind later because we get a lot of calls for people that are looking at historical data and they think it's the live status. Right now, this system is producing 9.8 kilowatts. The house is only consuming about 1.8, 1.9 kilowatts, so the excess is being exported to the grid. At times, you'll see both the grid and solar power powering your house. At night, you won't be producing solar power, and the grid will be the sole power source for your house. The credits you build up during the day will be used to offset the energy you use at night. Tap the X to exit the live status. Let's move on to the energy page. When you first visit the energy page, you'll be looking at what's happened today since midnight. The figures at the top will match what you saw on the status page. All of your date navigation is at the top. The app shows you the last time the data was updated. Remember I mentioned that this is historical data. Only the live status screen shows you what's happening instantaneously. Right now we're looking at the day, and you can use the navigation buttons at the top to go back to yesterday or the day before. If you put your finger over any one of these 15 minute increments, you can see at the top the numbers are changing, and a little pop-up window tells you what happened during that 15 minute increment of time. I'm going to stop here for a minute to discuss a couple of things that might look different in your app. If you have batteries, there will be additional information on this page. We're going to have a separate video. We'll put a link in the description below, but keep watching this video before you jump to the battery video. You might not have consumption data shown on this page. There's a few reasons that might happen. First, in about 5% of systems, it's simply impossible to add consumption monitoring to your home because of the way your electrical system is set up. If we didn't install your system, there's a likelihood that you don't have consumption monitoring. A lot of our competitors don't put this in for you, even though the consumption CTs come in the box and they really should do it for you. If you want to jump directly to a day, you can tap on the date and select the exact date you want to look at. Click done and it jumps right to that date. On a perfect solar day, you'll have a nice curve. Any dips in the curve means that it was cloudy or raining, or maybe you have a shading impact. Either way, a reduction in solar power will be evident in the app. I tell people all the time, you can tell the weather with the app, it's amazing. Your consumption data will be shown in orange. Each day your consumption will be different, 
and it's based on your habits and your household usage. The most important figure on the page is the net import or export number. This indicates whether you are an exporter of energy for that day or an importer of energy. On this day, the client was a net exporter of energy, meaning they produced more energy than they consumed. On this particular day, the homeowner was a net importer of power. They did not produce as much solar as they consumed. You can look at your data based on the day, week, month, year, lifetime, or custom dates. We'll skip over the week and look at the month. It's early in the month, but this client has produced more solar energy than they've consumed in their house. Therefore, they're a net exporter for the month. In some months, you may be a net importer of energy. In other months, you might be a net exporter of energy. With net metering, if you're a net exporter of energy during a month, it will carry over to the next billing cycle. You will only be billed for energy if you don't have credits built up and you've used more energy than you've consumed. Continuing to zoom out, we can look at the year. We'll go back to last year, and here you can see every month of the year. Again, you can put your finger over the bars to see each month's energy production and consumption. For most clients, they're building up credits from January to about May or June. And then in July through roughly October, air conditioning use goes up, solar energy production goes down, and you start drawing from the credits in the early months. This client was a net exporter of energy to the tune of 1.2 megawatt hours, which is the same as 1,200 kilowatt hours. Once you have years of data available, you can look at the lifetime. This system was installed in late 2019, and you can see from year to year, solar energy production has been very stable. For the life of the system, this client has exported 6.3 megawatt hours of solar energy more than they've consumed in the house. You can set custom dates to better line up the app with your billing cycle. Okay, I forgot to mention, where's all this data coming from? You have an Enphase IQ gateway device. It's usually in a box outside your house or inside your garage. Sometimes it's inside of a PVC junction box, but there's a small device that connects to your internet and it's constantly sending data. It updates the Enphase Enlightened web portal every 15 minutes. So don't expect the data to be completely up to date except for that live view page. When you're looking at the live view page, you're dialed in directly to that IQ Gateway device. Let's move on to the Array tab. The Array tab is a graphical representation of the solar panels superimposed on your roof. Each microinverter has a serial number that we've plugged into the monitoring system so that we know where each microinverter is located within the array. Along the bottom, you can see a gradient bar that shows energy production from low to high. It's about noon right now, so for this system, the panels on the southeast roof have produced more power than the southwest roof. That's why there's a difference in color. What's important here is that all solar panels on a given roof face produce roughly the same amount of energy. If there's no shading impacts, all panels on a given roof face should have roughly the same energy production for the time period you're looking at. If you have a panel that's underproducing, it will become immediately apparent because the color will be different. Then you can zoom in to see the numbers and identify any panel that might have a problem. Keep in mind this is historical data and this is not instantaneous data. Right now we're looking at the day, today. If we go back to yesterday, you can see all the solar panels have roughly the same color and the same energy production, despite the fact they're on different roofs. That won't always be the case. If you have clouds in the afternoon, for example, panels on a southwest roof may be outperformed by panels on a southeast roof. Just like the energy page, you can look at the array based on the day, month, year, or lifetime. You can quickly zoom in to one of the roof faces by tapping on the system button and selecting the roof face you want to look at. In the menu, you can find your account information under My Information where you can change your phone number, name, email address, and other settings. Under My Notifications, you'll be able to set up push notifications, text notifications, and email notifications for system issues. Under System, you can look at the site details, where it shows you your site ID, how you're connected to the internet, and information on how to contact us. Under Devices, you can see each device in your system and whether they're normal. You can dig in deeper to see the status of every device in your system. If you own multiple systems, 
the drop-down menu will show you all the systems you have access to. The number one service call we get is when your data monitor is not reporting to the internet. That usually means it's lost internet connectivity. In the app, instead of a normal indicator, it will say something like, your data monitor hasn't reported for 24 hours. If you click on that, the app will walk you through the steps to reconnect your data monitor. We'll go over that in another video. The Enphase Enlightened mobile app gives you a ton of data to help you manage your energy consumption and visualize your energy production over time. It's important to look at the Enphase app at least every month. I like to tell people every two weeks or so. If you notice something's wrong, get in touch with us right away. We have the exact same access that you do through our Enlightened web app. And we also have an Enlightened Manager app where I can dig into the details and look at the amps and volts for every microinverter in the system. We can do remote diagnostics. Enphase can do software updates remotely. It's a fantastic ecosystem and the Enphase app is super consumer friendly and we think you're going to love it. So that's it. The app is pretty straightforward, fun to use, easy to use. And when you get your first bill with net metering, it may be hard to correlate to the Enphase app and we understand that. Get in touch with us, send us your first bill, and we'll help you make sense of it. Don't forget to show the app to your friends and family. Get them excited about solar energy. Show them how your system works. And if you don't mind, click that subscribe button down there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll provide you with tons of great information over the years. And I love doing these videos for our clients. If you want to keep up to date with us, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.